Welcome to another episode of Design, Develop, Share. I'm David Anderson, and we're going to talk about another thing that's been on my mind, which is estimation in a scrum team. And estimation in a scrum team isn't something that's specific to scrum. Uh, and I know it's not a programming video, but it, a lot of this has just been on my mind. Um, and it's a very interesting topic because estimation is so key in the software development process, um, especially for management uh, the dev team, uh, QA, product owners, just about everybody, including your support staff and, and ultimately uh, your customers. So there's typically three very common ways teams do estimation. And the fourth option is to not estimate at all, uh, which I don't recommend. And in almost every case, even teams that don't estimate their work are going to have to estimate in some other fashion. You still have to provide projections of when you think something's going to be done at the project level uh, to customers or stakeholders. It really doesn't matter. Estimation is just a core fundamental part of being a developer. So the three ways teams typically will estimate, whether using Kanban, Scrum, or some other uh, process, is hourly estimation uh, with an emphasis on absolute estimates. And the second one is hourly estimation with the emphasis on relative estimation. And the third one is story points. And story points are relative estimates. And story points are complex. They're a lot more difficult to estimate with. So let's start with the first one, which is your hourly estimates. So hours are probably the easiest estimates to do, uh, especially if you're doing absolute estimates. You're, what you're trying to do is determine exactly how long a uh, piece of work is going to take you. So if my job today is to come in and write four unit tests and fix a bug, and I know it's I'm going to have to do some manual testing, and maybe that bug is a, uh, it's a logic problem in a business layer module of some kind. Maybe the, the some customer calculations are not calculating correctly or whatever. And so I need to write some unit tests, give it some more inputs, replicate the bug, red grain refactor, fix it, done. Um, I might say, based on all those factors, that it's going to take me an hour. And I might say it's going to take me uh, 15 minutes to uh, for, to write the first two tests, maybe another 15 minutes for the other two, maybe 15 minutes for manual testing, verification, uh, maybe five minutes to do my check-in and my notes and those other things. And I come up with an hour. The problem is with... And, and, and that can work uh, in a lot of cases if you know the system really well. You're very good at what you do. And there's also not a lot of uncertainty, risk, or complexity in that work. And that's ultimately where uh, absolute estimates in hours fail is everything we do in software development has risk, complexity, and uncertainty. And there, you, there is a lot of that things that you do know. Uh, I do know how long certain things are going to take, but there's a lot that we don't know. So the second way to estimate is using hourly estimation in a relative manner. And so basically, given a series of tasks, if that task takes me an hour, and my next, next work item is similar, but maybe there are some differences. I can say, well, relatively, it's going to be about an hour's worth of work as well. It's similar, this is different, but that's not a big deal. Or I might say it's going to take me two hours because it's relatively the same, but because of those different things, there's an extra hour's worth of work. And so that's relative estimation. It's comparing uh, hours uh, to similar things you've done. But the problem with hours is that absolute estimate is still not an hour is absolute it's it's 60 minutes um and the problem is trying to do relative estimation with hours doesn't work because you're giving false expectations something usually happens some complexity some risk you have some uh problem with your environment uh you you, you know whatever the reason is um you're not going to be exactly two hours almost never now, what a lot of developers do, especially contract workers, is they'll log two hours, whether it took them an hour and a half or three hours or four. If they estimated it two, they're going to put two hours on their work log. And that's a common problem because now you're not being honest. But a lot of people do that. A lot of developers do that. And 
there's a fear that they don't want people to see that it took them longer than they said it would. That's a, not a great thing. It's not a great feeling. They want to appear successful. But we know, we know. I, I look at it, I say something took me two hours. It really took a day. And whether the actual work was two hours or not, if it took a whole working day, people don't care. So relative estimation with hours is difficult because you're trying to combine relativity with something absolute. So the third option is to use story points and story points try to compensate for those problems. So a story point is a very difficult estimate. It's purely relative estimation and a lot of teams don't estimate story points very well. Hours are easier, but they're not really accurate as an estimation tool. Um, so story points are very difficult because they're not, a, there's no conversion from a story point to time. But the question is still always, how long is something going to take? How do you do that? So the first thing that you have to understand about a story point is a story point means something uh, to an individual and the work they do. The second thing you need to understand is a story point means something to the development team and all the members as a whole. The third thing you need to understand is you need to establish some kind of baseline for estimating with story points. So relative estimation is really nice, whether it's hours of story points, because you can relate what you're discussing and what you're trying to estimate to something else. So in, I read a book a long time ago on, I think it was quantum mechanics, and they talked about relativity. And one of the things they talked about was, okay, what is big and what is small? Well, I don't know what those things mean. This rock is small. Okay, compared to what? Small compared to a pebble. Is a pebble small compared to something microscopic? A pebble is actually quite large. How large is a baseball bat compared to a rock? Well, if the rock is bigger than the baseball bat, a baseball is not relatively the same size. So relative estimation, the point there is you always have to have something to relate to, some kind of context. That's what makes a story point valuable. The thing you then can do is take that and say, okay, that thing that might be an hour's worth of work, this other thing over here is relatively the same, but there are some differences. And so what I do personally is I always talk about risk, complexity, and uncertainty. So risk are things to me like when I'm doing this work, there's risk of causing regression to these other parts of the system, which means that we're going to have to do regression testing. There's risk that if I fix this bug, I might introduce a performance problem. My phone overheated in my car, so we're outside now. So we were talking about uh, the risk factor of estimating a, a story point and uh, regression testing, performance, you know, all these different things. So, and there might be other things that there's risk of. Uh, there's also risk of uh, the outcome not even being successful or the risk of uh, the desired outcome not being achieved. Um, so risk is a factor that I consider when estimating a story point. Complexity is another area that I consider and that's more along the lines of how much effort is this actually going to require me? So again, effort not in terms of how much time, but how much effort. Is this a cosmetic UI change? There's really not very much effort involved. I've got some JavaScript, some HTML, some CSS, very basic stuff. But maybe that JavaScript is MVVM with Progress Kindo or Angular, and now the complexity is much higher. Or maybe the work I'm doing is writing a complex SQL query that must perform very quickly. That's a lot more complex than like a label change on a, a GUI, for example. So complexity uh, is something I definitely consider, and that sways into my story point estimate. Uh, complexity could also be things like environment and deployment, uh, and just the difficulty of the problem. Cryptography, for example, and encryption is a challenge. The last category is uncertainty. And the uncertainty is like, there's just things I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't even know how to solve the problem. Maybe uh, I don't know what the desired outcome is. Maybe there's questions there. Uh, maybe I don't know 
what the problem is. So not even not knowing how to solve the problem, but not knowing what the problem is in the first place is a challenge. And then maybe even lastly is, is what I do know. I, I do consider those. So there's four things I always consider, and that is my baseline framework for how I estimate all things. Um, so my framework is constant, but it considers non-constant factor, factors. And uh, so that's how I do story point. Now I have, the, the other thing that I talked about is establishing, you need to have something to relate to. And so a lot of times this comes in experience with your job. Um, I've been in this, doing this for 10, 11 years now. And I've written a lot of different kinds of software, desktop, web, uh, screen sharing, uh, in a very basic manner, all kinds of things. And so I have a, a pretty good baseline to relate a lot of different kinds of problems to. Um, whether it's database work or UI work or business logic, um, infrastructure, architecture, it really doesn't matter. Uh, my experience is broad enough that I can relate to many things. And so whether I'm on one project or another, uh, I can compare writing a SQL query for the, a certain kind of problem to another kind of problem I've solved in the past. And so that's the thing about story points that you have to establish that baseline for is you have to find a way through your experience to be able to relate to and say that thing in the past did ultimately end up taking me about this amount of effort to achieve. And the thing that about a story point that's uh, so that's kind of the individual side of a story point um, and how I estimate those and that's why I think they're a lot more complex than the hours because hours you'll never achieve that absolution of knowing exactly how long something is going to take you when there's the risk, complexity, and uncertainty. So you might as well use something that does facilitate those things. Now the other aspect of story points, or even hours, and this is why I think hours are more difficult, is a story point, we've talked about the factors for an individual, but a story point means a lot to a team as a whole. And this plays into your burn down charts, how you project what a team can actually accomplish and get done. And so over time, when the team establishes the idea of a story point, and I train people to start by thinking small, medium, large, extra large, double extra large, t-shirt sizes, that's a good starting point. And then they have to learn what a story point means to them over the course of several sprints. And each individual has to develop their own framework and understanding of that, but the team as a whole also has to come together and do that. And one great way for a team to do that is through planning poker and making sure that when there's disagreements on story point estimates, regardless of each person's contribution to that work item, the testing, the design, the, the acceptance, it doesn't really matter. The coding, for example, uh, the team can establish a baseline where they agree what's small, medium, big, large, extra large. And once the team establishes that, then the team is able to agree on those estimates. And if they don't agree on those estimates, then they usually have a discussion and they discover what the risk, the complexity and uncertainty is. And maybe they have ideas on how to solve those things and they can come to a more reasonable understanding of their estimate. So if the team Two members on a team say this is two story points and the QA tester says four. Well, why do you think it's a four? Well, I don't know the business logic behind this and I really don't know what to test. Well, right then and there, the other two members of the team can address that concern and maybe bring that four down to a two because maybe it's just a simple five minute conversation that resolves that person's concerns. So that's an easy thing you can do. Over time, as the team establishes that, then you can project what that team is capable of. So you can determine in a sprint planning meeting how much capacity that team can take on. And you learn that capacity over uh, a period of time by completing sprints. So you have what you estimate when you start a sprint and then you have what you completed in the sprint. So if I estimated that we can take on 50 story points worth of work and we only completed 25 of those story points, then 25 story points, regardless of how many hours it took me, 25 story points is about my capacity. Then what the team can do over time is monitor that over three, four, five, six sprints and see the average 
uh, capacity that they are able to deliver. And so if over the course of that many sprints, they're able to deliver 30 story points on average, that becomes the team's true capacity. And the thing about story points that's even more complex than ours is when the team changes, new people come on, uh, people leave, the team's capacity and the, their understanding of that established size and relativity changes. So they have to establish a new one over the next few sprints. And usually it's a lot faster than the first time because if you're adding a new person, the existing team's already there. If you're removing a person, that might have a much higher impact. So with the ability to know the team's capacity using story point estimates, just like ours, I can still project how long something's gonna take. And it goes beyond a sprint where a team starts being able to do backlog estimates at a very high level with very little understanding. And eventually you can get good at that too. And a backlog estimate is something like, I think that project is going to take 150 story points. And based on the team's capacity of 50 story points for every two weeks, I can project it's going to take them six weeks to complete that project. And that estimate is not absolute. So it accounts for the risk, the uncertainty, the complexity, and what you do know. And over time, you'll find that if you train people well enough and you coach them and, and they put the effort into it, you'll find that story point estimates being relative, peer relative, are far more accurate than hourly estimates could ever be. You'll be able to give better expectations to your end users and your stakeholders, and your stakeholders being project managers even, uh, business people, CEO, uh, anybody that has a stake in what you're doing. So you can kind of see why hours don't fit as a good, solid estimation tool compared to story points, but you can also see why a story point is so much more complex and difficult to get right. You can estimate just as bad using a story point value uh, as you could estimate, you know, bad in hours. Uh, you can do bad at both. Ultimately, I tell people, use the estimation metric or the unit, the estimate unit that works best for the team. Um, you can't mix them. You can't have half the team using hours and half the team using story points. You need to come to an agreement. And if a team succeeds better uh, with hours, maybe because the work doesn't have a lot of risk or have a lot of complexity, maybe there's not a lot of uncertainty in the work that that team is doing, hours might be just fine. But for most software teams where problem solving is the entire job, building new things, um, story points in my perspective are, are definitely the way to go and you just got to put in the effort that's all there is to it so that's it those are uh, your four estimation options don't estimate try to use absolute hours try to use relative hours or use story points and there might be other ways to estimate but those are probably the most common four that you see in scrum teams and how they do their work and find what works for you ultimately your goal is success so that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you find it helpful or useful, definitely share it, like it, subscribe it, and we'll see you back next time.